As you're about to find out, it's not always easy for native people to pronounce words in the English language. Myself, a British person, and my new friend Jennifer from Canada, make sure you check out her YouTube and her Instagram, we are going to try to say strangely named cities from the other person's countries. Okay, that's all the introduction we need. Let's check out the interview. And welcome, Andy. It is so wonderful to have you here. So why don't you tell everyone a little about yourself? Yeah, sure. Hey, Jennifer, thanks very much for having me on. My name's Andy. I'm from England, the south of England. I'm an English teacher and online blogger. How about we have a little fun and let's test each other. Let's test each other on some cities, towns, and see if we know first how to pronounce them and if we know where they are or if we know anything about them. How does that sound? Yeah, it sounds good. Let's do it. Okay, so why don't you start and you can test me and see if I know anything about these cities and towns in the UK. All right, can you see that? Okay. I can, and look, you're prepared. <laughs> awesome. Hey, hey. <laughs> All right, okay. So let's go town number one. Okay. So how is this said? Worcestershire. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? Uh... <laughs> Worcestershire. <laughs> Are you like the sauce, the Worcestershire sauce? Is yeah, it like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But it's not. That's how we not say how it, you though. say it. <laughs> what do you no. say? All right, you ready? I'll yeah. Show you. So we say Worcestershire. Oh, Worcestershire, Worcestershire. Yeah. So the sauce you call Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. It's Worcestershire. extremely difficult to say. I I swear. In North America, we call it Worcestershire or something <laughs> like that, because this is a sauce I'm very familiar with. Uh, I don't know about my students watching. Do you know the sauce in the bottom left hand corner, the little sauce? Worcestershire. <laughs> but no, it's <laughs> Wuss, Worcestershire. Wuss, 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 sorry, say it again. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Yeah. So this was invented in this town, obviously. Yeah, so I think you probably know about the sauce. It's got anchovies, vinegar, and some other some other things in. Basically. Yeah, I do know about the sauce. I think you put it in like hamburger meat, right? We would just usually have it on like cheese and cheese on toast. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we use it to put a little bit in like a hamburger before before you turn it into a patty. Other than that, I'm not sure how we use this sauce, but I don't think it's, it's one of those sauces everyone has in their fridge, but I'm really not sure what you do with it, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, so you can use it in the cooking process as well. I've heard about that, actually. So using mm -hmm. it in the meal. So yeah, it's famous for Worcestershire sauce. And to be honest, it's really difficult for me to say. Um, so yeah, it's not easy for like, I guess, anybody studying English, like a foreigner who's like non-native. For sure. English speaker. And also it's notable. So I just picked a famous person, Sir Roland Hill. He invented the the postal stamp. Oh, so. okay. I never would have known that no i didn't know it from worcestershire <laughs> was i Wor close worcestershire oh yeah worcestershire worcestershire yes okay i'm still gonna call it worcestershire <laughs> that's yeah. what i've been saying my whole life <laughs> okay cool um let's go down next one all right all right how'd you say this Bolio. Try again. Bolio. <laughs> no? <laughs> Bolio. <laughs> I, I really think we could turn this into a meme of you reading these names. It's so good. <laughs> well, you got Bo, Lee, and then like, ooh, <laughs> Bolio. <laughs> Actually, we say it, Bewley. Oh, Bewley. 
Bewley. Bewley. Well, that's a lot of unnecessary vowels, isn't it? <laughs> In the spelling. Absolutely. And this is a, I hope my students are laughing about this, but also making you feel better to understand that native speakers don't instantly know how to pronounce something because spelling and pronunciation are very different in English. So it's not something I automatically know if I see an unfamiliar word. I need to learn the pronunciation from a native speaker like Andy to make sure I'm saying it correctly. Okay, so it looks like boy, boy, what was it? Boily? Boily? <laughs> Boily. <laughs> Bewley. Bew, Bew. Okay, Bewley. <laughs> it looks like right. Bewley is like a rich place with all these fancy cars. So, yeah, it's a very small town. Not oh my God, 800 I... people. Yeah, that's why there's no notable people from it. So, okay. uh, <laughs> low chances of getting someone no famous way. from there. Yeah, but it, it does have the British National Motor Museum, which is... um. I guess anybody who's into cars in the UK would know about it. And okay. So, yeah. so, yeah. It looks like a, a very scenic place, maybe somewhere you would go to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city, perhaps. Yeah, you could go there to relax, for sure. Mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, cool. Do you remember okay. how to say it? Zero for two, boily. No. Beauty. <laughs> Bewley. <laughs> Bewley. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to when I've got to say Canadian places now. <laughs> okay, let's go down. Next one. Kylie? Kylie. Uh, no. Kaylee? No, but they're both English names. Do you have those names in Canada? Yeah, Kylie is a very, Kylie and Kaylee. Yeah, they're very common names. The spelling is not like this, but they are common names. So it's not Kylie, it's actually Keithley. Oh, why? Why is there a TH <laughs> in there? Keith? <laughs> Keithley. Okay, what's going on with this L'Oreal because I'm worth it? So you know who this guy is? Chewbacca? Yeah, so the original Chewbacca in the original films was played by Peter Mayhew, and he, he lived in Keefley. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah, and it's known for its textile industry. I, I've been there once. It's like a classic northern Yorkshire town, like mm. northern English town. So, yeah. Nice. How do we say it? Keithley. Well, that one's easy. I see the TH there. But how would I imagine that there's a silent TH in this word? Like, I just would not know unless a native speaker tells me. And again, students, this is why it's so important to use an audio dictionary or better yet, a native speaker to learn pronunciation. Okay, cool. So I think I think we can say that you remember that one. So I think that's one out of three, do you think? But I got it wrong originally. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, but anybody would. Yes, anybody okay. Anybody would. That's anybody true. Would. Okay, <laughs> let's get down. All right. If you play Marley Bourne. Marley Bone. Not not far, actually. Not far. Yeah. So it's it's Marlebun. 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 Bin. Bin? Bin. I I would say bone, but some people bon. People say bun, bun, marlebun. Okay. Yeah, marlebun, so bun. It's okay. It's it's an area of London in central London, uh, famous because Sherlock Holmes lived there. Obviously, ah. not a real person, but yeah, and still. <laughs> the museums there as well. The Sherlock Holmes museums there, and famous for the first human heart transplant. Oh wow! Okay, marlebun. So, Have you been there? Yeah, I've been there. I used to live in London, but it's um, I think it's on Monopoly. You played oh, the British Monopoly. I have not played the British Monopoly. Good thing, because clearly I don't know how to say any of the names. <laughs> okay, uh, have you played <laughs> any Monopoly? Yes, of course. But the ones we have are, are I guess North American names. Ah, is I don't know why I thought Monopoly would be 
all the same all over the world. I'm trying to think but- of one place on Monopoly to share as a reference. And I played Monopoly like six months ago, and I can't think of one one of the towns or like one of the squares. Boardwalk, I think that was one. Or is that anyway? I can't remember, but they're not, they're American based names. They're not. So you must have like a British monopoly and I have an American monopoly. Interesting. I never, I never thought about that. So there must be an Australian monopoly uh, perhaps as well. Mm, yeah. And obviously I've seen like Game of Thrones monopoly. Yeah. Like or, yeah. I've seen those ones, those other ones too. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go down. Okay. What about this one? Loughborough. Wow, okay. You're not not far off, actually. Oh. I think there's some famous joke about, like, when a man uh, was asked for directions by, like, a, a like an Australian, they called it Luga Baruga. Luga Baruga. <laughs> <laughs> Luga Baruga, that's awesome. Okay, what is it? It's actually Loughborough. Oh, La- Loughborough. Bro. I, here it's three syllables, but I would probably say two. I'd probably say Loughborough. 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 Yeah. Loughborough. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't know to do, like, I guess the G-H, like laugh is an F for the G-H. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't instantly think to do a F sound on that. Hmm. Loughborough, okay, and it's the the university is very famous, so in our country, okay, and just lots of like ex. So, what do we call that? Alumni, people who went there. Yeah, an alumni. Alumni. It's a lot of famous sports people in. The oh, UK. is it a prestigious university then? Yeah, yeah. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Luga Baruga University. Yeah, yeah. Luga Baruga. <laughs> Luffbro. I like Luga Baruga a lot better than Luffbro. <laughs> I guess I did terrible. I didn't know one of them. I was kind of close in a couple, but I didn't intuitively know any. So all my students, I hope that makes you feel a lot better. But now it's your turn. Okay. I'm gonna so let me share my screen here. All right, Andy, do you think you'll be able to say these Canadian cities? Let's let's find out how well you do. Okay, this one. Salt Stay Marie. One more time. Salt Stay Marie. Oh, very close. Very close. Obviously, the Marie part you got, but it's a little different because this spelling is just pronounced as Sue, Sue, Sue St. Marie. And most likely, you have I don't know the population, but this is a pretty small city, but it's a city in both the U.S. and Canada. So in the U S it's in Michigan and then in Canada is on in Ontario. So I have the little map here on the right. And then it's, uh, it's like a kind of like a port city. So they have a lot of shipping and then it connects the great lakes. If you know your geography of the great lakes, Lake superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, the great lakes of North America, something all North Americans have to learn in school at least. (laughs) Interesting that it's, it's across the borders. Yeah, exactly. So actually, to be honest, I've never been to Sault Ste. Marie, so I can't tell you too much about it, but I know that a lot of people uh, on the Ontario side and the Michigan side, they frequently cross over and it would be very common to even maybe go for lunch on the other side. But because you are crossing a border, you would need to bring your passport and go through immigration as well. Just for lunch. 
just for lunch for sure because you're going into the u.s but canada and u.s we have very very good relationship with border crossings so we have expedited crossings and it, it's it's they'll just like quickly look at your passport and you can go it's not something that they would require a lot of documentation or a lot of explanation for why you're there how about this one that's way more difficult than any of the ones i put i reckon <laughs> <laughs> saskatchewan you nailed it yeah saskatchewan. yes say it again saskatchewan yes that is exactly it how did you know that saskatchewan saskatchewan wow. very good andy that is amazing because you even put i'll tell my students that a lot of the reason why pronunciation is incorrect is because your syllable stress is in the wrong place so if you say uh Saskatchewan or something like that, Saskatchewan, it would sound really weird because it's Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, exactly like you said. I don't know how you knew that. I, did, I didn't cheat. Yeah, before the uh, before this video, I was just researching all Canadian places. I think you were. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Saskatchewan? No, no. What's it famous for? Anything? This is the image I wanted to show you. It's famous for crops and agriculture. Now, this image, the yellow, I believe that's canola. Canola is yellow, I believe. But it's, it's more famous for wheat. Wheat in Saskatchewan, but obviously canola, barley, the, not obviously, but those are the other crops that it, it's known for. And Saskatchewan is also known for being extremely flat, which is why I kind of show this picture of this kid riding their bike and it looks flat. So there's this joke that if your dog runs away in Saskatchewan, don't worry because you'll be able to see it for days because it's just so flat. So you can just see anything. Okay. So that's like the Netherlands, I guess. That's really flat, isn't it? Oh, I didn't know the Netherlands was known as being flat as well. Oh, okay. Maybe that's just a European thing. But yeah, it's it's extremely flat in the Netherlands. Oh, so no mountain biking <laughs> or snowboarding or skiing in Saskatchewan or the Netherlands, I guess. <laughs> and no dogs as well. No dogs. Oh, actually, no. It's a good thing to have a dog because if it does run away, you can see it, can't you? Exactly. So this is uh, central Canada, as you can see on the map here. But this is also one of the coldest parts of Canada. So guess how cold it would regularly get in winter in Saskatchewan. Just random guess. Like regularly? Yeah, regularly. Like an average January or February day. Minus 10? Minus 25. Okay. About minus 25. And then with the wind, if it was windy, it would probably be minus 30 ish. So this is, if you're moving to Canada, <laughs> I don't know if I would recommend Saskatchewan because it is very cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. But congratulations on your pronunciation. I'm jealous that you did a lot better than I did with any of those British names. <laughs> I'm ready for the next one. Let's do this. I'm on a roll. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. I'm honestly, I have no idea because I want to say the last syllable is like Q, but Gananog. <laughs> Thank you. If you got this one correct, I would have been mad. <laughs> okay. Try it again. Is it not Ganana Nog? It is not Ganana Nog. <laughs> Gan -gana Your Ganana oh, kind of sounds Gananog. like banana. It reminds me <laughs> of Ganana, banana. <laughs> okay, but don't feel bad because when I went to this place for the first time, I also pronounced it in a very funny way and I had no idea what it is. The correct pronunciation is Gana Nakwe. 
this is pronounced quay 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 a quay at the end and then gana na quay gana na quay gana na quay yeah gana na quay gana na quay is a beautiful breathtakingly beautiful place it's in ontario where i live it's about maybe a two hour drive and it's in this area called the thousand islands so there are all these tiny tiny little islands but some of them are too small to even put a a small shed on they're just tiny but some of them have one island will have one one cottage or one house and there's no other room on this island and then you have to take a boat from the mainland which is Gananoque to to your island where you might have your summer cottage and there's uh, the image here this is of a castle in the thousand islands but mm. this castle is actually on the uh, in the United States, so it's on the American side. But we share the Thousand Islands with the U.S. as well. So this is another shared area. Half of half of the water is Canada, and then the other half is the U.S. So if you're on a boat cruise and you want to go on one of these islands. Some of them have customs because you're entering a different country. And again, you have to show your passport. Wow. I think I'm probably going to live on that island if I ever live in Canada. Yes, it is very beautiful here. And the weather is not too, too cold for Canadian winters. Maybe this would go down to your minus 10, minus 15 in the winter. Mm hmm. So more mild compared to <laughs> compared to Saskatchewan. How do you pronounce this one? Gananaque. You got it. Good job. Good job. I do recommend as a tourist, if you're in Ontario, to go to the Thousand Islands region, which includes Gananaque. Okay. All right. Our next one. Are you ready? Let's do it. Nice and easy, right? Oshawa. Oh, yes, you did it. Maybe this one was a little too easy, but I thought for syllable stress, you might put it on the end or something, but and say like Oshawa or Oshawa or like something like that. But you got it. Oshawa. Okay. Oshawa. Not too bad, right? <laughs> yeah. It's quite an easy one. What's it like there? I've never been. I think it's pretty boring, to be honest. Sorry, anyone from Oshawa. It's a small town. It, maybe it's a little scenic because it's right on the water as well. And uh, on this map, if you look, so Oshawa is in this red square. And if you look down, you have Niagara Falls. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with Niagara Falls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Niagara Falls is very beautiful. So perhaps it would be like an easy boat ride to get down to Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is something else we share with the US. So part of Niagara Falls is in Canada and the other part of Niagara Falls is in is in New York State. I believe it's yeah, I believe it's New York State in the US. Okay, I think this is the last one. Are you ready for it? Yeah, give it to me. Okay, I'm going to go Nanamo. Okay, I knew you were going to say something like that. No, <laughs> thankfully. Nanamo? It is not Nanamo. <laughs> but what about the stress on the middle? Nanamo. Oh, getting better, maybe. It's Nanaimo. So you were close with the stress, but for some reason we pronounce it as I, nigh, mm. nigh. And then the beginning is like unstressed. So it's like a n, uh, nanaimo. Mm, nanaimo. Nanaimo. Do okay. you recognize the dessert in the top left? Is it millionaires? Well, we call them nanaimo bars because mm. they were 
created, I guess, in Nanaimo. Honestly, until I put this presentation together, it didn't really click that Nanaimo bars probably come from Nanaimo, but I've been eating Nanaimo bars since I was a little kid. They're a pretty popular dessert. Mm -hmm. So I guess they, they maybe have a different name. What'd you call them? Well, I didn't know if it was millionaire shortbread, but maybe it's not. Okay. You know millionaire, sh millionaire shortbread. I don't know millionaire shortbread, but I know shortbread and that sounds delicious. I guess it's shortbread with chocolate. If I had mm -hmm. to guess, mm -hmm. no yeah, chocolate and something else. Yeah. What I've never that? heard of millionaire shortbread. Okay. What's yeah. in Nanaimo bar? They're very sweet. I haven't had one in a long time because they're actually too sweet for me, but they're extremely sweet. So whatever the sweetest ingredients you can imagine, they are in a Nanaimo bar. <laughs> so if you like sweet, you will like these, but the base is like, it, it tastes very much like chocolate. I'm not sure what this cream filling is in the middle, but the entire thing is quite sweet and very soft as well. You usually put them in the fridge before you serve them. And so they get hard. So I think the middle is some sort of custard that can get quite soft, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, you'll have to Google it. I'm not too sure. Okay. But Nanaimo. Nanaimo. Yeah. And what about British Columbia? Is that a place you're familiar with? Yeah, it's it's a is it a county or a how would you call it? Yeah, we call them provinces. Okay. So in the U.S. they call them states, and then in Canada we call them provinces. Okay. okay. And then what would you call it in England? A county. A county. Yeah, a county. Okay. When I think county, I think somewhere very small, like even smaller than a town almost. Oh, no. So the county is the area with many towns in it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm. Hmm. So, yeah, I think it's like state or province. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Nanaimo is actually on Vancouver Island, which has Victoria. If that's the most recognizable name on the island is Victoria. Now, it's still very cold compared to other places. This isn't a tropical island, of course, because we're in Canada, but people actually do go surfing on this island, but you would have to wear a wetsuit because the water would still be very cold. Okay. And you can go whale watching here and there's lots of wildlife on the island as well. So it's a very beautiful place, perhaps similar to where you live in the sense that a lot of people will retire here because it's one of the warmest parts of Canada. And in winter, maybe it will be plus five in winter, which would for Canada, that is quite warm. The fact that it doesn't go into the negatives. That is, yeah. Did they get snow? Sorry? Is it, did they get snow, a lot of snow there? At all? I don't think so. Not on the island. Uh, mm. So in British Columbia, they have the Rocky Mountains, Whistler. There's a lot of big ski areas. So, of course, they you can see it on the map here, all the mountains with the snow. But mm. on the island, I, I think it would be a rare occurrence to get snow, and it would probably instantly melt. I don't think it would stay if they did get snow. Well, Andy, that was fun. Clearly, I feel like you did a better job than me. You you got a lot of them right. I feel like I need to really improve my, my UK geography a little. But thanks so much for coming on and sharing that. I had a lot of fun, and I'm sure my students had a little fun watching their English teacher do such a bad job with pronunciation. Yeah, it was excellent. Thanks very much. I really appreciate you having me on. And why don't you tell my students where they can follow you and learn English with you as well? Yeah, so on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, it's at English with Cook.
Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much again, Andy, for being here. And we also had prepared to talk a little bit about food, food differences in the UK and North America. So why don't we save that for our next conversation? Sounds good. Yeah. All right, Andy, I will talk to you soon. Thanks again. As you can see, it's not always easy for natives to pronounce words in the English language. I struggled on some, Jennifer struggled on some. There will be times when you come across a word that you don't know how to pronounce. It's just about repeating it. Repeat it, repeat it, and eventually you'll remember it. I will be doing more videos, so please subscribe if you want to, and I'll be able to keep doing this. All right, see you next time.